Oh, 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 oh. come on girls, yes, and boys, oh, give us a good smile, let's try, whoa, and come on then, whoa, oh, oh. well this is about photographing children, now this is the sort of thing you have to do sometimes if they're not being good. Oh, that always makes them laugh. Well, let's get on to some more serious stuff. The most photographed subject in the world is probably children, so it's worthwhile to take a bit of time to talk about it. Whether shooting in the studio or outside, it can be great fun. Now, if it's fun for everyone, then you're halfway there to some great shots. In this lesson, I'll be dealing with outdoor photographs. While some of the shots you'll see are catalogue shoots, most of the children will never have worked before. So the problems are the same shooting commercially or taking pictures of your own children. Now let's have a look at the first four shots. You may have noticed that they have things in common. Firstly, they all have soft or out-of-focus backgrounds, caused by a good use of shutter speed and aperture. There are lessons on both of those subjects on my site. This technique helps the children jump out of the background. Secondly, they're all shot from the child's eye level or lower, because a high angle that most parents use tends to belittle or dominate the child, whereas a low angle helps show their individual personality because we can see their eyes and expressions better. The third thing is the children are active, always moving so their attention isn't so much on the camera. This means they don't get bored so easily and will enjoy the session, which means you'll have longer to shoot before they get tired. The last thing that's similar is the light. All these shots are in bright sunlight. I know that goes against the norm of early morning or late evening. But getting children on a set at dawn just isn't reasonable, and by dusk they're too tired to work well. The session should be taken as a treat for them, so it's up to the photographer to make the best of the light, meaning we must use reflectors or fill in flash uh, sometimes. So this will show you how um, I tend to use reflectors. It's just crept into the image, so it's a useful shot to show you. Well, while we're on the subject of lighting, let's think of ways where we can solve this problem of having to shoot in, uh, in daylight, or in fact, str uh, strong sun. There's, of course, the reflector, as we've said. Now, those exist uh, in all different colours. Uh, you can have them in gold, in silver, or in white. But all those will be subject to yet another lesson. Now, another way is, quite simply, by using the in-camera flash. Uh, your instruction book will show you how that works, or in fact a professional would use um, an off-camera flash like a speed light um, set for fill-in. Well, coming back to this shot, I can show you something that I really enjoy doing, and that's keeping the model in the shadow and using the sun to create a rim light around her. Uh, this works very, very well, and I use it a lot. Now, the important thing is to throw light back uh, with a reflector and to measure the light on the girl's face and not on the rim or the sky in the background, if there is any sky. Well, that's handled the model and the light. Now, what about the photographer? Well, he must be a magician, a clown, a blackmailer, and a bit mad. Well, that's easy because he wouldn't be shooting kids if he wasn't. This image shot with a wide angle. The expressions are because I was playing the fool in front of them. It really does help, and it also helps to have a funny accent. This was shot in the States, and uh, they loved my English accent. These two girls started running towards me down the broad walk, um, and I was shooting very wide angle, and eventually they actually ran over me, much to their great amusement. Sometimes when the child is running, you must run with them, and the assistant or second half, or your second half, must run about uh, moving the reflector. In this situation, I recommend a higher shutter speed and maybe turn off the lens stabiliser if, if your lens has one, as strange movements can confuse them. Props of some sort are useful to keep them active, 
This girl was chasing an imaginary butterfly, and I was saying, look, there's one over there, and another one behind you. Energy levels are high, and the focus difficulty as well. So for this, I would set my camera to servo focus and keep the subject in the middle of the image and crop later if needed. With a shutter speed of around 500th of a second at 3.5 aperture on a 200mm lens for the short depth of field. There's a lesson on that uh, on my channel as well. Other props like bats, hats, etc. are useful, but maybe keep some props hidden away until the energy or tension levels seems to drop. They may give you another half hour's great shooting. Locations like old barns, streams, rivers and playgrounds give an added interest to the child as they will always find something to do in these environments. The family pets as well. They're all great souvenirs. You can have a bit of fun with retouching as well. Just a standard snapshot that's done by the family and change the background like this and it's good fun, makes a lovely image. Right, now... If you're not totally exhausted after a day shooting kids, then you've not done a good job. But now a word of warning. Never be alone with kids. Always have plenty for them to eat. Always have a lot of people looking after them. You need at least one person per child or two child children. Um, because they can get into trouble, particularly if you're outside. So make sure you look after them. You can't, while you're looking through a camera, see what another child's doing. So be careful, enjoy yourself, and good luck with the pictures of children.